China's once a decade change in leadership is in place. The new leaders will take charge in March. Will they be able to sustain the economic prosperity that has gone in the past 30 years? Or they will face many more problems than they anticipate. Analysts the world over are hedging their bets. But there's one analyst who is not very optimistic about China sustaining itself the way it has done over the past three decades. And that's Gordon Chang. TV personality, author, analyst, and somebody who watches China very closely. And we are very pleased to have him with us here in the studio. Welcome to NDTV, Gordon. Thank you so much. Well, you wrote a book in 2001 saying the coming collapse of China. We are still waiting. When is it going to happen? Well, in 2001, I said that it would take a decade. So I'm a little bit more than a year out of time. But what we are seeing right now is really signs of distress in Chinese society. Uh, we see an economy which is faltering. The Communist Party is stumbling. The authority of the central government is eroding. Military is breaking free of civilian control. And of course, we have all these protests across China, many of them violent. So the wheels are coming off the country. Mm -hmm. And this really is a problem because the Communist Party, I do not believe, can sustain itself because its challenges are much too big at this point. Do you think the, when you talked about the collapse uh, more than a decade ago and now the uh, conditions that obtain in China, uh, do you think the new leadership itself is not uh, very keen to have economic reforms because without economic reforms, they may not be able to sustain the, uh, the growth that they've shown so far? Well, everybody says that China needs fundamental economic reform. Mm -hmm. It needs to go away from its investment-led model to a consumption-based one. Um, but they've been talking about this for more than a half decade. And all this time, consumption's role in the economy has been sliding. And, and now it is the lowest in the world. So essentially the problem here is that you have a political system that cannot make the change that everybody knows must occur. We've got to remember that the new Politburo Standing Committee, which is the apex of political power in China, which was installed at the 18th Party Congress in November, at least four and maybe as many as six of the seven seats on the Standing Committee are held by the so-called conservatives, who are, in the Chinese context, really the hardline anti-reformers. These are people who uh, believe and represent the entrenched interests in China. So clearly, you're not going to have much reform soon. But if the reforms don't happen, and then as you see, uh, as you've been saying, that there have been a number of protests which have increased, uh, smaller, larger, and the largest. Uh, so where do you see uh, China heading in, in, in a way uh, towards a collapse? Uh, is it going to be the collapse of the Communist Party or the economy? Well. For both. Uh, because the party for more than three decades has based its legitimacy primarily on the continual delivery of prosperity. And, and what we saw in 2012 really was an economy that wasn't growing in the high single digits that Beijing claimed, but was growing in low single digits. When we look at electricity statistics, which are by far the best indicator of Chinese economic activity, when we look at the manufacturing surveys, the price indices, um, corporate results. We see an economy that is growing two, maybe three percent for the year, maybe four. But clearly, this is an economy that is underperforming. And because of that, I, I don't think that we are going to see the robust growth that everybody is predicting for 2013. And this is not just a temporary problem. The reasons that created more than three decades of growth no longer exist. So I believe China is in a super cycle downward. But no figures that come out publicly, at least, uh, speak about uh, this kind of a downturn or this coming uh, danger to the Chinese economy, which in turn will also endanger the uh, global economy, if I may say so. Do you think uh, that is going to happen? The global economy will also get affected if the Chinese uh, economy also collapses? Well, any big economy is going to have effect on the world. But we've got to remember that China is not an engine of global growth. To be an engine of global growth, you have to take the imports from other countries to create growth elsewhere. And China, through its mercantilist policies, has been taking growth from other countries. Um, really, the engine of global growth these days um, is the United States, which is still buying from the rest of the world. So, you know, China, of course, when the economy fails, is going to affect the rest of the world. But it's going to affect the world a lot less than we think, because what we're going to see is this growth migrate back to places like Europe, the United States, Latin America, and certainly Southeast Asia, India. Um, so I, I believe that we are going to see, yes, an effect, but it's not going to be the disaster that everyone is worried about. But that may not be a global disaster, but for the Chinese domestic 
uh, audience or the domestic uh, consumption, uh, right. it will get affected or will there be more unrest in China itself? Uh, of course, um, because when you have a political system that, that really basically has derived its legitimacy from, you know, its ever-increasing double-digit growth rates, you know, of course, growth in not only the low single digits, but, you know, contraction I is going to affect that. And I think that that is going to drive the Communist Party into doing things that are going to be injurious for its long-term health. Um, so, you know, essentially, we have a country that will be in distress. And we've already seen some of the problems where you have declining growth rates, you've got more problems in society, you have China becoming much more aggressive. And I think that they're all connected because the slumping economy is creating a crisis of legitimacy. And the legitimacy crisis is causing China to fall back on nationalism, increase friction with other countries, mm -hmm. and that increased friction is aggravating its economic problems. So this is a self-defeating feedback loop. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app. Fully optimized for retina display. Full screen view. Faster response time. And Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.